Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, as usual, I've got quite a lot of machine going on. I've been modifying and making one or two bits and pieces for Richard's Sentinel steam wagon. I've eventually got the uh, oil filler cap made for the lad's motorbike. I've got the boss machine down and well, a little bit of aluminium plate that's finished. I also show a different method of cutting that internal thread. Instead of going in with a tool, I show a method of going out with a tool, using the tool upside down in the rear of the lathe. Uh, I show quite a lot of that. It's interesting. It's another way of doing things. Uh, one or two of you was pointed out that it could possibly be a better way to do it. It certainly is a better and simpler way to do it. I went down to Richard's steam wagon yesterday. Uh, we've got quite a lot of work done on it. I didn't get any video really. Some little bits and pieces. I'll probably include them. But next Sunday it should be good because I'm going to try and get the, the wagon into steam, uh, get the boiler fired up, get it warm through and build the pressure up because the boiler inspector is coming the week after that to do a visual inspection as well as a steam test and I'll try and get there and get some video of that done as well. Update on Debs. Debs is doing okay. Uh, she had an injection last week on Monday. She's got one more to get and then basically that's the treatment finished. That's the end of the, end of the treatment. Then you just basically wait and see what happens. Uh, hopefully she's going to be all right. She's starting to get back to the way she used to be. Um, she's looking for a job. She wants to go back to work. So things are certainly looking up. I'm going to set a hoax to off a, a lad down at True Position Engineering at Newburn. Um, ingenious mechanisms for designers and inventors. It's all about linkages and cams. And there's three volumes of it. Certainly some nice light bed I'm reading in there, but I will have a, a look through them. There's some nice drones in, different things I'll probably be able to utilise uh, for some of the stuff I make. This is the oil filler cap I machined in last week's video. That's the one I machined in the video before with the wrong hand thread on. I machined this oil cap by screw cutting from the outside going in over and then stopping on the recess. One or two people mentioned that you can screw cut with a tool in upside down, the lathe running backwards, going from the inside out over. It's right you can do that and you will also get a right hand thread. At the minute then the lathe is caught in aluminium so what I'm going to do before I clean the lathe, I'll turn the threads out of there and I'll remachine it just to show how that tool works upside down cutting a right hand thread. Right I've got the I've got the left hand thread one out in the lathe. What I want to do is bore the bore the threads out, put a groove in the back and then basically show you how the tool works upside down. Machine the register on there. It's important the tool is on centre height. Obviously, it's not, it's a mile below there. That looks pretty good there. Okay, so we've got a tool on centre height. The compound slide remains at the same angle, 29 degrees. This thing will be turned in like that to put the cut on. Remember what I said about the angle of the tool? The 60 degree tool, half a 60 is 30. So the angle of there is 30 degrees, which is the same angle as running from the centre line with the compound slide. So I set on centre height, I need to set up to make sure the tool is square with the job. We we'll use a fishtail to do that. Then we need to set the gearbox up again to cut the same thread 6mm pitch. 
this is a little tool used for setting up the make sure it's at the right angle that's fixing that little groove there and a little notch and that's touching all the way down the, the workpiece so this tool is set at the right angle to the job that way and that way right the next thing we need to do is zero the compound slide that's zero there turn in the cross slide until we're just touching which is there zero the cross slide Then move the carriage in until the tool is in the groove we've made for it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to zero my day or so I know when the tool is back to the start position. Right, so we zero that. Right, I can't cut that thread because I've got a different, different change wheels in. I'll just put a course, the course is thinner that I can cut using the chain wheels I've got in. It's just to show how to use the tool upside down. So the course is thinner that I can cut is 3.5. Little pitch, so that goes 3.5. Both those levers go that way. And that one goes that way. And that should cut 3.5. Go for 45. Nice and so, so we can see exactly what's going on. Put the heat screw into motion. Okay, so we'll turn that into our into our gap. The DRO is showing zero. We can put a feed on using the compound slide. Start the lid up. So the lid's run forwards. The tool is in the back. Right, watching the indicator come round. Once again, I've started on a full line. Bastard, right. What happened there was I didn't check that the carriage was going the right way. I normally do, but when you're filming, you get distracted. The leaves go turn the wrong direction, and basically, it sent the tool into the blind end of the job. It hasn't done any damage, but luckily, it's, uh, that's what happens. Right, so we'll stop the lathe. Back to where we were, and you can reverse the direction of the lead screw. That's easy to do, it's just a piece of turn that knob. Right, the lead screw is going the other way, so now when we engage this, it will cut in the right direction. Okay, so you can see you can see how easy it is to make a mistake. Okay, I'm watching for the indicator to come round. Here it goes. Then you can see the carriage is coming out. It's cut the thread. Quite simply all we do now, disengage the lead screw, turn the tool out, back to our zero, use the DRO. This goes back into zero, some more cut on, and we'll start it and we will go again. It's obviously a lot simpler doing it this way because you can allow it to come out of the job. You can scroll cut and then come off the end of the job 
without damage or anything. The other way you can run at the blind end of the hole. I'm sure you'll recognise this is a pulley of a control cable of a Sentinel DGH steam wagon. It's actually a pulley that a wooden cable goes around and it operates the linkage that puts the boiler feed pump into the mesh. It's also got a similar setup on the similar drain valves, but all that's missing, so we're going to have to make it up from scratch. Now, Richard has had these made. The large truck precision engineering at Newburn made them for them. They've been milled out to solid. You can see they've even put the, the casting web marks in, the reinforcing marks. Made a beautiful job of them. They've also put in a bit of half inch Whitworth studding. Everything they do is Whitworth on the wagon. They use Whitworth and the ULF. We don't use metric if we can possibly help it. Uh, what we need in there is that type of fitting so it screws into wood. That's just screwed into there and locked it in, so I think I'll be able to take that out, turn the head off this, put some Whitworth threads on, and screw that back into there with some Loctite on, and that should do the job for that. This one here, that will be screwed in, or it could be part of it, I'm not quite sure. I would think that would be cast iron anyway. I think the pulley is brass, or bronze. We'll do this one first, so we can get that out. I've got a half inch die so I'll be able to put some, some threads on there. Look at that bastard's coming from the chuck now. I give in. Honestly I give in. I surrender. Wait sure what's happened here. There yeah, it's called losing the chuck. Right, I give in. Anyway, that's how you use the lathe tool upside down. 